Hi everyone, welcome to a new day, some new tactics. Chess Bay, very early on with the hammers. Uh, Hi Joe, everyone, welcome to sorry. a new day, some new tactics. My bad, but let's do the intro twice, why not? Uh, we have uh, people in the chat. Uh, Joel <laughs> asks me to pause a little bit. So he can go to the store. Dayan is the first one. Liam in the house. Eilertsen wants a chess dream. Yeah, this is going to be a chess dream. We're going to do some tactics. I've been playing tournaments the two past days. The Arena Kings tournament. And the, um, the Title Tuesday tournament. And it has not been very successful. I... I get some good positions and then I mess it up, getting low on time. Uh, and what do you do when you mess up positions when you get low on time? You gotta do those tactics, you gotta drill them in, and you gotta make sure that you do it quickly uh, so that you avoid time trouble uh, next time round. <laughs> Chess Bay with the hair comments. Your hair is warding off invaders from space today. Yeah. I honestly, it's just gonna get worse if I try to do something. Twisted was in the middle of recording a song. That sounds interesting. 3091 is an okay tactics rating, says Kirkwood. Uh, yes, it's okay, but we're gonna go even higher. We're going for 3150. 3150 is the goal for today. Normally, I start off slow, losing some 20, 30 points, and then I just grow stronger and stronger as the stream goes on. And then there's some kind of cutoff moment where I um, I get tired and start losing again. So part of getting a good tactics rating is knowing when to stop, when you've done enough for the day and need to let your head digest and, um, uh, and rest for a little bit. Patriotic pullover, says Johannes, yes. Let's do some Norwegian flags in the chat. Norwegian flags, so let's do a couple of those. Uh, it's my my sister's, actually. It's my sister's Hussegense. And uh, if you don't know what a Hus is, then you really should check out some YouTube videos. It's basically the Norwegian tradition of uh, getting poor grades on your final high school exams. Um, I didn't really get the point. I didn't really participate. Um, I did get a sweater though, uh, but this is my sister's. And what's good about it is that it says, uh, it says kind of the year you graduate. So this is Hus 11. So that means whenever I wear my sister's pullover, I feel three years younger. I feel three years younger. And everyone who sees me thinks I'm much younger than I am. Uh, Thomas asks, haven't you been hovering at 3,100 for a few months now? Uh, yes, yes I have, which is why we need to take this moment to go to the next level. Uh, Tubberjack asks, is your sister as good as you are in chess? Uh, no, no she is not, but she's better than me at other things. Feeling younger feels good, says Liam. Yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Twisted Artist asks, is tactics a good way to improve your chest if you're a beginner? Basically, the thing is, tactics is a good way to improve your chest, no matter your strength. And what's good about the tactics trainer is that it gives you a rating. And so it gives you puzzles 
that is catering to your level. And as you become better, you can see your progress uh, and you also get more difficult puzzles. Uh, so my first tip, if somebody asks me, how do I get better at chess? I say you play blitz on the line and you do tactics. Those two things really can help you uh, quite a bit. I mean, I, as a kid, I was just sitting on the line playing blitz all the time and I, it worked out well for me. Okay, we're gonna get going. First puzzle of the day. Oh, and this is so disappointing because I had this same puzzle previously on a stream. Wow, that is disappointing. I have had this puzzle previously. And honestly, right now, I don't even remember the answer. <laughs> oh, what a way to start the day. Instead of doing calculation, you're doing a memory exercise. How many people in the chat remember this puzzle? Because I did this on stream. I am 100% sure. Uh, so queen c6, rook d8, check, king h8, queen takes d5, there's queen h4. So I seem to remember that not being the solution. Um, queen d7, queen d7, and it's very difficult to stop Queen takes d5. Queen d7. Difficult to stop. Queen takes d5. Threatening queen f7 check. But queen d7, there's knight f6. Knight f6 takes, takes, takes on d5. King up. <laughs> it does feel like he gets my bishop in the end. Amun with the suggestion queen c6 rook d8 queen e6 king h8 queen e7 but then there's rook d g8 rook g8 uh, i think defense against that ah what a way to start the day actually i'm pretty sure i got it wrong the last way around maybe that's why i'm getting it again could that be because i got it wrong i get it again but i did check the answer the last time i really should be able to remember There's something about this knight. I'm supposed to get this knight. I think it's queen c <coughs> sorry. Queen c6, rook d8, queen c7. Queen c7, rook f8, takes, takes, check, king f7, queen d5. That's good. Queen d7 to start with. Queen d7, then knight f6. So I'm, I'm thinking queen d7 is not the way to go. Queen c6 has the advantage of threatening the rook, the disadvantage of allowing rook d8. So I think... Queen c6, rook d8, queen c7, threatening the rook, threatening queen f7 with the checkmate. So he needs to go rook f8. Yeah, now I'm gonna go for that. Okay, so we got it. 
Um, but I think we got it because I remembered kind of the solution. Uh, I'm absolutely positive that I had this uh, puzzle previously. Um, so yeah. Pod asks, uh, hi Hammer, I was wondering if you have a degree in something. Um, no, I do not have a degree in anything. I have uh, uh, I have one year of economics and one and a half years of, of journalism, but no degree. I'm a quitter. Uh, remember that black has queen e1 at the end, says Liam. Yes, that's kind of the point because when I take the 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 knight on e4, I block the e1 square. And then that is the the crucial part of this puzzle. Tabor Jack uh, says, "Well, remembering a pattern is part of tactical skill, right?" Yeah, I suppose. But at the same time, this wasn't really remembering a pattern. This is remembering a sequence, which is uh, a different thing, I would say. Okay, this is going to be interesting. It's an extremely forcing position. I'm not going to get away with a lot of stuff here. I'm going to need to give checks. Otherwise, Queen C8 is going to be a very strong move. Although something like Queen G3 check and H5 to give the king some space could be okay. I'm guessing that black is happy with the draw. That is my first kind of instinct, that black is just looking for a draw. And uh, to make a draw, you should be fine. Queen E3, Queen E2, Queen G1, King D2, Queen D4. Yeah, that should be a draw. Check, check. Can I go for more than a draw? Uh, I don't know. I have my doubts. I have big doubts that I can go for more than a draw. So I'm going to go for the line which to me seems to be forcing a draw. This is what happens when you don't calculate. Okay, we're gonna see the solution. Check, check, check. Yeah, I, yeah. I have no excuse. That was, that was not good. Johannes suggests rook e8, patzer sees check, patzer gives check. Rook e8 was the right answer. Well, well done. He also continues, I didn't really calculate further though. <laughs> yeah, no, that was kind of the clue. You needed to calculate a bit there. Uh, and I did not. And so I got a well-deserved no point score. Okay, knight takes d4 is very tempting. Knight takes b4, even more tempting. Knight takes b4 seems to win a piece. How much time are we going to spend when knight takes d4 b4 wins a piece? Am I missing something? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, knight takes b4, rook e1. No, I'm actually threatening the queen as well. We're going to go for the winning the piece. That's going to be good enough to solve that puzzle. 
okay this is a study kind of thing I'm not gonna go c6 because that's a self mate to rook b8 um, and then the question is what other moves than c6 do I actually have I'm actually I'm actually kind of tempted to go e4 because I want to cover this a6 square Because when I cover the a6 square, I can go king c6. Somehow I need to get either the pawn or the king to c6. There also is a check here king up and then taking on on c8 and then c6 check if he goes back then i win ah i got it queen f5 check forcing the king back then i sacrifice my queen then I go c6 and now I just got to make sure I go to the wrong to the right place with this pawn uh, so I need to go to e3 to get the Zugzwang and then I win the pawn ending Johannes, wow! Queen f5 check and win the pawn end game. I didn't even see that comment. Johannes is on point. Wow. Yes, the idea was to sacrifice the queen, but I needed to go queen f5 first to force the king back, because otherwise if I gave up the queen immediately, the king would get out on, on d6. Uh, Midnight Fox asks, what if black did e6 instead of, instead of king back? Well, if e6, then I think queen f7 check uh, is good. Actually, e6, queen f7 check, king back, check on f8, king up, and then c6 is checkmate. Because you open this diagonal from f8 to d6, so it's immediate checkmate. Snow Joel says these puzzles are more tricky than the ones I get. Yeah, that's how it works. Beautiful. Wow, says Liam. Let's do another one. I'm on a roll now. Okay, so I'm going to trap this queen. There's no doubt in my mind. This queen has two squares. I'm actually tempted to go rook c1. Rook c1, because then I take one of the squares. Or maybe... Maybe give a check, and then give another check. No. Rook c1 is not massively silly. Rook c1 intending rook c7. Queen d7, queen, then, then rook, rook c7. I don't see how it wins though. I can give a check with the knight. 
but then I lose control of this f5 square. Uh, knight e6, hoping for a fork on g5, says Perpetual Stalemate. Uh, yeah, that could actually be a good idea, yeah. Check, check. The thing is, I don't really want the black king to escape. I feel like having it on the 8th rank is a pretty good thing. Check. Well, the good thing about 96 check is that it means that there's only one possible move for black he has to go king e7 uh, chess coding suggests knight e6 check king e7 rook b7 check king e8 and then rook f7, zugzwang. Um, yeah, but one of the moves you have is h6, uh, which uh, which blocks your um, threat of knight, a, knight to g5. I don't know, to me a move like rook c1 feels more, feels right. Getting the rook to c7, where I control both of the escape squares for the black queen. That, that feels like what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, no, rook c1, I don't know what to do with king e7. Just king e7, king f6, king e5. And the king is just running away. And I don't see how to stop that. So if I want to go rook b7 and then rook c7, and cutting off the king in the meantime, then he has queen c8. Uh, after which I also don't see what my, uh, my idea is. So I'm struggling with this one. Maybe it is the check, check, king up. Just doesn't feel right. A3 is also tempting, typical kind of to zwang ish move. No, rook c1 feels right. Rook c1, king up.
Uh, Stylely suggests knight e6, king e7, rook check, king f6, rook f7. Uh, but then black can go king e5. And the king kind of escapes. It's th threatening the, the pawn on d5. Ah, but there's his Tulsan. Then I go a6. Or a3. Okay, may maybe yeah. Yeah, I see what you're doing. Okay, so check, 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 king e5. But after king e5, I can just go a3. Whenever the king takes on d5, there's a fork with knight f4 and takes the queen. And so black has a couple of moves with the h pawn, but then I just go back and forth with the rook. And black ends up in Sultan. So check. So if that's not possible, he actually has to go king e8. King e8, check. How do I choose one there? Okay, so check King E eight. After king e8, he's threatening queen takes f3. One way of stopping that is putting the rook on f8, but I don't see that working. Chess coding says after rook f8, rook f7, h6, rook f8, check, king e7, knight f4. Yeah, but you can go king d7. King d7 and after knight f4, then I have queen takes f3. So I see your point, but I also see how to stop it. So what's, what chess coding is talking about is knight e6, king e8. Rook b8, king d7, rook f8.
King e7, Rook f7, King e8, e3, h6, Check King D seven Yeah, it's closed, but I don't see the finishing touches. Johannes says, 96 check has to be right. I see a lot of nice variations. Tom Haas, I would do knight e6, rook b8, 2, but I cannot see the follow-up. If this was a game, Hammer would have already blundered, says Dayan. No, 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 no. You're, you're, you're wrong. Hammer would have already flagged. Let's do some uh, timeout emotes. Uh, too weak, too slow. You would have timed that. I actually spent now 15 minutes on this one. That is way past what is okay. Okay, we're going to go for it. I don't see it, but we're going to go for it. 15 minutes on a puzzle is too much. If you spend 15 minutes on a puzzle, uh, you have failed the puzzle. Just check the solution and move on in life. That is my tip. I'm really not sure. I guess we're going to give a check. Okay, I, I don't understand why not King D7. Why not King D7? I don't understand. Um, I'm guessing there's a reason, but I don't understand. Okay, so we're gonna do this. And then rook f7 was the the suggested move, and after h6, I don't see what to do. But we're gonna play rook f7 anyhow. And now the line chess coding was saying was rook f8, king e7, knight f4, which is good. I actually saw that almost 10 minutes ago. But rook f8, then king d7. And then I'm stopped. King d7, I don't see the move. Ah, king d7, then a3. Now we do the tzutzvang. Brilliant. And then the only move black has left is going king e7. And now we have this checkmate. Wow. Wow. Okay, that was... Yeah, that was something else. 15 minutes, 40 seconds. It's too much time, but this checkmate was very, very beautiful. Okay, 
This one does not look as difficult. Check, bishop in between. Check, king in the corner. Check. I don't know, this is one of those puzzles I don't really feel like calculating. It just feels like it should be winning so easily. Check, check, check. King back. Hmm. Maybe not that easily. Check. 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 Oh, of course, we go check and then check. I'm being slow today. I'm being so slow. That was poor. That was poor. Okay, we got a rook we're supposed to trap. And I'm going to trap it with knight f3. I'm going to trap it with knight f3. No, I'm going to go king g1 and then have a fork when the rook goes back to h4. I'm going to have a fork, so I'm going to go check. Hmm. Okay, it's actually not so easy. I think I'm gonna ha have to go king g1 at the right moment. But then rook h4 and I need to have a fork ready. But I don't really see how to fork the king and rook. So the first knight c6 is very obvious. Then king e6 is the only way to stop the pawn. But my problem is that after knight d4 check, he has king d7. He doesn't actually have to capture the pawn, uh, which means he also avoids my clever idea for the four. Mm-hmm. 
trying to find some kind of pattern where the knight can jump and trap the rook somehow. But I don't see it. It feels to me that I have to force the rook back to h4 and I have to get a fork when the rook is back on h4. And honestly, I'm not even close to achieving that. I mean, had I been close, it would have been interesting, but knight c6, king e6. Knight d4, king d d7. And the pawn is blocked and the rook is gonna escape on the next turn, on the next move. Maybe I'm supposed to get the Tsutsuan with the Rook on h4. Although that feels very difficult to achieve. Knight b7. King e6, knight c5, king takes d6, I'm gonna look at the chat. The chat has moved on to Alec being the Fortnite legend. Ah, Alec is in the chat. And now we're discussing Magnus's Twitch channel, Muskinissen. Don't you have any moves for me? Knight c4? Yeah, I don't believe that, Tomas. I don't believe that. Tabor Jack, d7, king e7, knight c6, takes knight e5, king moves, knight f6. Tabor Jack says that almost works. But that's the thing about chess, almost. Well, anything in life, really. Almost is never going to be enough. Almost is never going to be enough. So knight f3 threatens the rook, threatens the d4 square. But there's an escape square on, on h1 as well. So it can go to h4, it can go to h1. And I'm having trouble seeing how to defend both of those uh, possibilities. Knight c6, king e6. Knight d4, king d7. Knight c6, king e6, knight e5. Even rook h4. But I think you can also take the pawn. Rook H1. Okay. 
Okay, no. It's got to be... It's got to be D7. D7, King E7, King H1, Rook H4. That's not really going to help anyone. It's got to be Knight B7. Knight B7, King E6, King G1, Rook H4. And then I have no follow-up. I need some more tea. Tea emotes coming up. Focalius d7 and king g1 and he has to to give the rook eventually um d7 king e7 king g1 rook h4 knight c6 king takes on d7 i don't see how he needs to give the rook i don't see it The thing is, I'm not even close to seeing an idea that remotely works. The thing about puzzles like this is that sometimes you see something that almost works and then you have to tweak your idea and, and look at the move orders and, and figure out what the, the small uh, nuances are in the position. But I can't even see something that is close this rook seems untouchable to me. I, If I get him to play h4, I can win the rook. But how am I going to get him to play h4? I mean, he's about all about getting the king close to the pawn and stopping the pawn. I don't see how I can get him to play... To play h4. I don't even see how I can force him to take this pawn. At this point, that would be an achievement. Getting him to go to a square where I can fork him if he goes to h4. So like uh, e7, uh, d6, g7, maybe even e5. If I can get him to one of those squares, it's good. But he's just going to go king e6, king d7. And I don't see it. And now I'm getting upset about it. I'm getting angry. Angry at the puzzle and angry at myself for not being able to solve the puzzle. It's an end game. There are so few moves available. You really should be able to find the one move that works contrary to all the other moves that fail.
Okay, let's do some creative thinking. What universe can I trap this rook? Probably I cannot do it. If I get my knight to... Even if I get my knight here, he can go up with the rook. But getting the knight here would be the best way of forcing him to even go either go king rook h4 or h4. And after h4, I can probably win somehow. Uh, Romis is in the chat. d7, king e7, king a g1. Rook h4, g3 seems promising. Um, yeah. Okay, that was easy. This is why my tournaments haven't been going well. Because easy pu- Ooh, I'm struggling with easy puzzles. And that's a bad, bad sign. Okay. We got ourselves a headache. Wow. Uh, any other move uh, would have uh, lost the rook. So rook a4 wasn't a must, but if he had gone rook g4, then I would go knight c6, king takes d7, knight e5 with a fork and winning pawn endgame. If he goes rook e4, I have knight b7, king takes uh, d7, knight c5 with a fork. If he goes rook d4, I have knight c6 with a fork. If he goes rook c4, I can just take it with a knight. If he goes rook b4, I can go knight c6 with a fork. And then finally, rook a4. That was, yeah, that was not, really not good. I should have had that much sooner. Okay, so I think the question here is how to remove this uh, rook with a check. So, queen takes h3 seems extremely tempting. Because uh, then there will be no more attack. No more of the rook pinning the knight. And when I get to move my knight... Uh, there's so many attacking pieces, you would think there's a checkmate somewhere. And there is. Okay, that was an easy one. This one also looks very easy, because there's just four pieces on the board. No, six. Six, including the kings. Six, including the kings. I mean, how can this be difficult? I think, I think the answer is to go here and then here and then do the race. Um, but I'm really not sure why I need to give away the bishop. It just feels like the puzzle way of, of doing things. Okay, I see the idea. The idea is that if h6, then g2, h7, there's bishop e5. King takes e5 and then g1 queen h8 queen and queen a1 skewers 
the king and queen on the long diagonal. That's the idea. So probably I should go check in bishop f1. How does this alter the situation? Ah, because then the rook is on the first rank and there's no check on a1. So since the king is on f1, there's no longer queen a1 check to skew uh, the king and queen. Runaway pawn. I have two knights up, but how do I do the, how do I stop the pawn? That is the question. Or even should I go, am I going for the win with the white pieces or am I just happy with the draw? These puzzles are so hard considering there are so few pieces, says the whole niece. Yeah. No, I agree. But I actually prefer studies because it's... Because they are designed, they are very elegant. The solutions are very pretty. The chess kid is saying that knight f4 wins in all variations. Okay. That is a bold statement. Uh, knight f4 check. If king g5, then knight h3 means that I rescue. Uh, I rescue the because of the the fork. No, because of knight f2 coming, then I stop the pawn. So knight f4, king f5, I go knight d5. So after knight f4, if king h6, the knight d6 is probably winning. So after knight f4, the only move is king f7. King f7, but then knight d6. And king f8, knight g6. Okay, that's very easy. And when something is very easy, I get a bit cautious because I feel like I must have missed something. But we're going to go with uh, the chess kid and say this is going to be an easy win. Yeah. Interesting. I'm a piece up and a pawn and yet this is a puzzle so I'm guessing that this pawn is going to be difficult to hold on to uh, seeing as how they have bothered to make a puzzle out of this Hmm. Probably there's some kind of self-made motive.
So I guess the first order of business is keeping this pawn. So bishop e6 makes a lot of sense to cover the b3 square and also uh, not allowing knight c4. So bishop e6, then knight b1 is the only move. Knight b1 going after the pawn. And then after a4, the only move is probably king b4. Going back, trying to get to stop the pawn. And then there's maybe king king c2 king c2 knight a3 check king b2 king takes on a4 bishop b3 check king b4 Uh, knight e5, knight b5, and black recovers, but just barely. Bishop e6, I don't know, to me it feels like I'm on the right track. This is so, there's just so many moves, which is what makes this basically impossible. So many moves to consider and it's the outcome of every move is, is also very unclear. Actually, maybe I should go knight e5 first. Knight e5. Still knight b1, a4, king b4, king c2, knight a3, king b2 takes, check knight b5, knight c6, it's not gonna work. Now maybe it is gonna work. No. Knight e5, knight b1. I, I've I actually Normally I would give up, but I feel like I'm very close. Knight e5, knight b1, king c, no, a4, king b4. King c2, knight a3, king b2, king a4.
check. The thing is, even I, if I get this position with king a4, knight f, knight a3, no, king a4, knight a3, king on b2, knight on e5, even if I give a check, knight b5 is probably okay, and then after knight c6, he has to move the knight, giving me a uh, discovered check. But just moving the knight, I cannot give a discover check without letting the king run away. Hammer is almost there, says the chess kid. Hammer is almost there. Knight e5. Yeah, I don't see it. That was just a message on Slack. I'm actually interested in whether you heard that sound or not. I'm gonna get myself some headphones. I was listening to the sound, uh, Alex sound sound during my Fortnite stream on Monday and it was absolutely horrible the echo I mean I don't understand why more people didn't complain because that I wouldn't be able to listen to that and like people were mentioning there were problems with his sound but I had not imagined it was that bad so uh, when I'm playing with Alexandra on, on Saturday I'm gonna wear headphones I just I need to test it because the last time I tried playing with headphones, it didn't actually work. 95, Knight B1. A4. Pawn is attacked, we move the pawn. A4, King B4. Maybe I should go bishop d7. Maybe I should just try to keep this pawn for as long as possible. Bishop d7, knight c3 check, then king c2. Knight takes a4. Close, but no cigar. It feels right forcing the knight out on the edge. And also it, by, by with the knight sitting on a3, it's taking out one of the, the king's escape squares. So it makes so much sense to do it. Knight 
there's some knight b1 a4 ding, 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 ding. I can go king d3 instead of king b2 king d3 D three takes Nah, I'm gonna <sighs> Chess Kid says once he finds three A five he might get the rest easily. Okay, three A five. Ninety five. Oh. Yeah, okay. Okay, so there was a checkmate there. I didn't solve it. I don't know if this should count. I guess not. I'm gonna take it. I spent so much time on it. I spent so much time on it. I'm, I'm just gonna... Input the right answer. Is it cheating? Yeah, it is. It is cheating. A5. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't close to seeing that. This looks like a pretty good move. I'm kind of afraid of some bishop takes f2 funky business. But I think it's fine. This, then maybe knight f6. So I'm not going to do that. Yeah, no, actually, no, I, yeah, actually, from now on, somebody posting the right answer in the chat is going to get a timeout. You have been warned. Okay, I really want to sacrifice something on f5. I really want to sacrifice something on f5. It's so tempting. I don't see how I can avoid doing it. But there's this thing with bishop takes f2. And then if I take, take, take with a bishop, then there's bishop f2. I guess on bishop f2 I can go king f1. That's a bit of guesswork. Takes, 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 bishop f2, king f1. I guess it should work.
King H two anyone safety first says Ben Techers. Yeah, no, that's not gonna be very safety first. Cause if King H two, there's Queen takes H four. Check. And then your safety first strategy kind of failed. Because you put your king in a more, more of an unsafe place. On the other hand, taking on f5, I don't really see what I'm threatening. Takes, 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 I'm threatening queen h7, but that can be stopped in like four different ways. One of which is, is rook e7. Well, at least it wasn't correct, so I won't get banned, says Bentekers. Queen, bishop takes f2, gets mated. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, threatens queen h7, checkmate. If a move like rook e7 maybe i can go queen h5 no rook e7 i can go rook c a i suppose I can also take with the bishop first. I could do that. Take with the bishop first and then I threaten both bishop g7 mate and knight takes d4. Then we can have a discussion about white being two pieces down. So how much of a threat really is knight takes d4 when you're two pieces down? Um, probably not that significant. other moves no i have to take on f5 with something i'm pretty confident about that do i take with the bishop do i take with the knight if i take with the bishop takes back i can play rook takes e8 queen takes e8 rook takes c8 Queen takes c8, then knight takes df5. And then I get rid of all of the, the rooks. There's seemingly no dangerous checks. Uh, well, there is dangerous checks. But maybe I can survive the dangerous checks. There's no queen b6 trading the queens. That's something. If he gives away the bishop in that case, it's difficult for him to guard. You know what? I'm going to take with the bishop and hope for the best. No, I'm going to calculate. So often I just decide that, okay, this looks good. I have one line to justify it. And then I missed like five different things in that line. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it properly. 
I'm not going to make a rash decision. Bishop takes f5. Bishop takes f2. I can just take. I can just take and there's no problem on yes okay so bishop takes takes back then i take on e8 i take on c8 i go knight f5 threatening bishop g7 there's no check on c1 so he has to go like queen d7 in worst case scenario, I can play knight takes d4, which yes, it is a piece down, but I won two more pawns and black's king is extremely exposed. So I'm gonna go for it. Yeah. Okay, so the right answer is bishop g5. Um, so all my stuff about there not being another option to taking on f5 was just silly. Takes, 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 takes. Takes, 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 and it's winning in every line other than queen g8. Queen g8 I did not see. There's always that one move, that one move at the end of the line and it ruins everything. Queen G8. Okay. Hey Anna, thank you for the host. Anna is celebrating her uh, Twitch partner status, and she's having a stream every day of the week, uh, which actually I am as well. Uh, but I'm having it because I don't have anything better to do. Whereas Anna is having a celebration. Queen G8 forces the exchange of queens, as far as I could tell. Uh, okay, once again, I'm disappointed because once again, this is a puzzle I've had on stream. Uh, so does it really give you puzzles you fail? They give you puzzles you fail once again? I'm going to have to leave a feedback about that. But b6 looks like such a tempting move. b6, just trying to get rid of that pawn. Trying to get rid of that pawn. Trying to make sure that you open even more files toward the black king. Rook d1, also tempting. Queen d5, reasonably tempting, threatening queen bishop d6. I have had this puzzle before, and now it's about memory instead of calculations, which makes me a bit upset. Oh, and my neighbors! are starting to enjoy their lives. Starting with the boom box downstairs. They have a really powerful base. Uh, queen e6, also pretty good. Queen a3, queen a3. I'm pretty sure that's the move I played the last time. Queen a3, that's strong.
I'm almost certain that queen a3 is what I did the last time. So let's see, what is the problem with queen a3? You know what? I don't see it. Queen a3 looks very good. Queen a3. Check. 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 Queen a3. I don't see a problem. I'm gonna go for it. No, I'm not. The thing is, I think this is what I played the last time. But my theory is that I'm getting these puzzles over again because I failed them the last time. So playing queen a3, there's a logic to actually that I failed it the last time. And that's why I'm getting it again. Chess coding gets hit by Moobot. I'm sorry, Link. Moobot is very aggressive on the links. I tried to fix it, but I'm not really sure how to. Johannes says, I really like you doing tactics. For a normal club player, it's interesting to see how 2600 guy is thinking. Uh, yes, but please do keep in mind that I'm, I think I'm poor at tactics, uh, compared to, um, to a normal 2600. Uh, I wouldn't say that tactics is my strong, strong suit. No, it just it looks so good. I, if it's wrong, I don't know what to do. It just feels so right. Queen a3. If the king goes to b7, I always have queen a6. Queen a3 covers c1 so that I can go with the rook to c1 in the future. It covers c5 so that the knight cannot go to c5, which is one of the main threats in the position. And on, on top of all of this, it threatens bishop d6 check, and it keeps an eye on the pawn on f3 so that I can go back in this long diagonal. What about queen d5, asks Mikey. Uh, yeah, no, queen d5, I'm concerned about knight b6. Queen d5, knight b6 is my concern. And then I can go something like queen takes f3. And I look pretty good. I'm a rook down, but I look pretty good because the black king is so weak. Um, but I don't see a concrete follow-up. It feels like the knight gets into the defense and, and can do some stuff. Queen e6 versus queen uh, a3 what is the difference asks uh, rob honey um no after queen e6 i'm afraid of knight c5 that is the the main difference that i can see queen e6 knight c5 i can go threaten the knight but then i lose my pawn on e7 so that is the reason i want to go queen a3 is because then I stop knight c5. I'm going to go for it. Okay. So far, so good. So this is very tempting. 
Maybe this is even better, Rook A1. Rook A1, what do you do? I threaten checkmate. You have to go Queen B7. Queen B7. Yeah, I don't see anything after queen b7. How about this move and then rook a1? Bishop d6 takes on e7, rook a1. Should be good. Move the king. How about I just take this one? I'm a queen up. I did that puzzle before. I don't know what to tell you. I did queen a3 the last time. I must have done this exact sequence. At the very least, I managed to find it once again, which is some kind of consolation. Plus one point. Congrats, says Joel. Yeah, well, one point is better than no points, I guess. Okay, now we get another study. And at least this is something I haven't solved before. And it's extremely tempting to go King E1. King E1, maybe Rook B2. King e1, rook b2, rook h5, rook b5, rook g5, and bishop d7 is a draw. Or even bishop g... yeah, no, bishop d7. So I should probably threaten the, um, the bishop immediately. So rook g5... Rook g5, king b4, rook h4, check. King c3, king e1, king f, rook f3, king e2, threatens the rook. If the rook moves, I take the bishop. That seems like the solution to me. I had not seen that move, but it's okay because I have this and take the bishop. Six points! Big, big puzzle. Big win there. I had not seen rook, rook h3 though. So technically I didn't actually solve it. I just got lucky. But it's okay, we're counting all the points today. All the points today. Knight g6 feels like the right answer here. Knight g6, king d5. Knight e7, king c5. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't give up this pawn so easily. Rook c4 is also very promising. Rook c4 and the king cannot move. Uh, knight d3 and then rook b8. Yeah. Knight d3 and rook b8. Wins the queen. We're on a roll. Seven points. 2150. Here I come. 
Now for another one, G4. I really want to do G4. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely checkmate. I don't know if it's the quickest checkmate, because I would think that white has so many different ways of giving checkmate. But it's definitely one of the moves leading to checkmate. But probably this and then this is also winning very easily. So this is just a poor puzzle in terms of there being um, many different ways of giving a checkmate but this is the most stylish one i would say ah let's just do it i think that was a very very bad puzzle i'm gonna report this one if i can find the report button because I think this was winning in four different ways. Yeah. Basically, every single move in this position is winning. Yeah, no, G4 is very cute, but it's not even close to the computer's top choice. Um, which means it's just a horrible puzzle in which you can play any move and still win. Uh, and those puzzles really shouldn't exist. If there's a puzzle that doesn't have just one right answer, it's a bad puzzle, regardless how cute. But that's fine. G4 was my instinct and G4 is what the people wanted us to play. Uh, next one. I guess I have knight g3 and bishop g5. But I'm not really sure that's anything because he gets a very good passed pawn on, on b2. And I ruined my pawn structure. I, sub I would think I can just take back on c3. Take back on c3, then g2, takes on g2, knight h4 check, king g3, bishop e7, Ah, of course, knight takes g3, king up, then I take on c3. If he takes back, I can go back to e4 with the fork 
and when he retreats then i go um bishop g5 okay good seven points seven points that was uh surprisingly uh easy for the level we're at now there here's a tricky one i'm guessing i should make a draw but it does feel pretty easy making a draw so maybe we got the puzzle wrong what is ah king b7 rook a5 a8 queen then comes rook d7 check and that may be good for for black but there's a stalemate there's a stalemate Another one in the bag. 3150, here we come. What is a Zugzwang? asks Guffen. That's a good question. Zugzwang is uh, German and it literally means uh, forced move. So Zug is move and Zwang is force. Uh, so, uh, Zugzwang is, uh, you forced move, or in this case, it's the, the case where you have to make a move, even though it worsens your position. So we talk about Zugzwang when every move, uh, makes your position worse. Uh, and also there's the German saying, Zwitzenzug. Uh, which is in between move and once again Zug is move and Zwischen is then in between uh, Space Cactuses what is your peak tactics rating uh, I think this is it I think this is it 31 31 I think this is the peak but we're going even higher we're aiming for 3200 but we got to do it in increments so 31, 31 is a good start. Johannes says, I am a German and that was perfectly explained. Uh, stalemate, yeah, this is a stalemate. So black has to take this pawn after which uh, white is stalemated. He's not in check and he has no legal moves. The king cannot go anywhere and the bishop is pinned by the rook. So it's a stalemate. Uh, Tower Jack. So essentially move one for either side is a Zugzwang. Um, no, because we use the expression differently. So I mean, we cannot, even though the, the word means forced move, uh, we use it for the occasion where any move worsens your position. An auf hinter in neben über unter vor zwischen. Those are the things you study in school if you have German at a higher level than me. So I don't think we actually got that far that we had to study these uh, special, special, um, I don't even know what it's called, conjunctions in thingies. There's also a Norwegian uh, guitarist uh, who's very good. I, I really like him. And he made a song that was just about, basically the re refrain was, uh, the chorus was um, was these seven German study works, or actually it's nine prepositions. Thank you, Cesar and Dono. 
Um, okay, let's do another one. We're on a roll. Going for the big numbers. Going for the 3 2. Or at the very least, the 3 1 50. Okay, this one seems very easy. I give a check, I take back the pawn. Mm, I get so suspicious when the solution looks easy. Give a check, take the pawn. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Okay. Queen here, threatens checkmate. Mm, threatens a check here as well. Maybe we should think for a little bit. If I move my rook and protect the pawn, that sounds pretty good. Move the rook, protect the pawn, and everything is fine in the world. And then g3. Ta-da! Three more points. Give us more of these puzzles. How many in a row is that? How about I just take this one and play g6? Uh, that is not a good idea because then queen takes g6 is winning. How about I play g6 and then take this one? Are there better moves? Knight a5 is very tempting. All of these g6 ideas, it, it just... It feels slightly dangerous with the black king position. G6, queen takes h6, takes on d5, the knight g5. Knight g5 threatens queen uh, h7, and if I take, bishop takes, and then threatens bishop f6. So I'm gonna play it easy. We're gonna go easy on this puzzle. We're just gonna go knight to a5. Knight to a5, then the computer is going to take on e6. I'm going to take on c4 with the knight. Mm. It's kind of dangerous. A little bit dangerous, that as well. Finally, there's queen e5, which honestly was my first instinct. Queen e5. That queen is so annoying. Why not just exchange it? Queen a e5 takes, takes d6. d6. d6, I can take on c4 and play rook e8. And I have a pawn up. Should be winning for black and should be pretty risk-free. Queen e5, he has knight f6. Queen e5, knight f6, queen takes f6, pawn takes on c6, then queen c3 threatens both rooks and a bishop. Both rooks and a bishop. That feels like a good plan. Queen e5. Maybe take on d5 first. Takes back. No, I think I'm going for queen e5. Queen e5, bishop g5. Maybe bishop g5.
I should be able to just take on g5. But I don't think I'm winning there. Uh, Shark asks, how is Queen E5 decisive? Is a defensive move? Yeah, no, it's it's just about trying to win a pawn while uh, countering White's attack. So the Queen on H5 is at the moment a very powerful attacking piece. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out how to remove that attacking piece uh, in a good way. Uh, Shark asks, is winning a pawn considered a decisive enough by chess.com? Um, I guess it depends on the position. Uh, not always, but if it is the best solution. I mean, every position is unique. Uh, and so every uh, solution is unique. And if you, if you put, if, if queen e5 wins a pawn and it is the best move in the position then it's enough right i mean tactics is just about finding the best move you're simulating a, a situation that could have happened uh over the board your job is always to find the best move regardless of how big an advantage it gives you so in, in some ways you could say that puzzles are bad because you know there is a solution. Uh, during games, you have to look at tactics and you have to find many that don't work. And you cannot be certain that something works because it's a puzzle. Uh, but, um, but yeah, if I win a pawn, I I'm going to be pretty happy. I'm going to consider that a winning advantage uh, and I don't really see any any other solution to this. I mean, my top choice is probably queen e5. My second choice is knight a5. And knight a5 is also just about winning a pawn. Knight a5, bishop f1, rook takes d5, wins a pawn for white and he has the superior pawn structure. So that's definitely winning for black. The only question for me is that whether knight a5 d takes e6, whether white can create some trouble for the black king in that variation. And to be honest, I'm kind of afraid. I'm, uh, I'm inclined to play queen e5 because I'm afraid of that line. But queen e5, bishop g5, I haven't found um, a good response yet. What's the refutation for g6, asks Yudai. Uh, g6, queen takes h6. E takes d5, knight g5. 
I think this is very dangerous for, for black. I so want to go queen e5, exchanging some pieces, getting the pressure off. Bishop g5, I don't know what to do against that move. e takes d5, bishop takes d5. And then there's some threats against f7, possible. Um, well, basically it j doesn't win a pawn, right? So white has some activity and it's uh, black is still trying to defend. You're genius! e takes d5, bishop takes d5, knight e5, knight e5. Takes, takes, knight e5, threatens the bishop on d5 and threatens bishop g4, trapping the queen. Takes, takes, knight e5, bishop takes a8, bishop g4. That's a trapped queen. I think it works. Take, take, knight e5. Also protects on f7, which is huge. Ah, but maybe you can go bishop b3 bishop g4 bishop takes f7 no then i can just move my king takes takes ninety five. I think that could be it. Because after queen e5, bishop g5, I couldn't find the right move. Bishop g5 is... I think it's quite a bit better for black. But I don't think it's decisive. I think white has some trickery still there. Whereas takes is very forcing. Takes back knight e5. You know what? I'm going to go for it. This is the last puzzle of the day. I'm going to go for it. If it's correct, it's huge. Then it's like nine puzzles in a row to finish the day. And this is a good solve because there were many interesting options. Booyah! Let's see some booyahs! Some hammer times I'm gonna do, some booyahs! Some carrots! Kids, eat your carrots! You're gonna get the tactics down! That was a huge solve! So many tempting options! I'm actually gonna do the analysis board for this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in a row. Eight in a row to finish off. I'm going to do the analysis of this one. Uh, because I really think queen e5 was also very interesting. Yeah, so the computer has queen e5 as the top choice.
Ah, and this is a game. Gawain Jones against Harsha. Uh, and the computer is not seeing it. Stockfish is having e takes d5 as the third choice. Queen e5. Okay, let's do the analysis. Queen e5. What happens on bishop g5? Wow, the queen sacrifice. G takes f6. Wow, g takes f6. I only considered bishop takes. Takes and takes with the knight. Bishop is threatened here. Bishop is threatened here. And black gets a lot of material for the queen. Okay, so from that we can conclude that uh, bishop, uh, no, queen e5 was also a good move. But we needed to find this solution to bishop g5. Bishop g5 was a very good try. Because the computer also says that white is actually better if we take the bishop. Uh, but let's go back. Let's go back. Takes on d5. Bishop takes on d5. And boom. The computer realizes there's a move he hasn't seen. Knight to e5. That was a very good solve. I'm very happy to finish off the day like that. 408 viewers. You can't leave. Says you die. Uh, lagging. Lagging. Groger. Lagging. Styly. Lagging. Okay, that's not good. I actually did some research on my webcam just before going to broadcast. Apparently, the webcam I have is known for having a bad autofocus, that it's doing autofocus. My computer has overheated. Yeah, no, I'm actually, I'm seeing my stream in the background <laughs> and it's not good, but it looks good in the exploit. In my exploit, it looks, it looks just fine. Is this computer running on a Game Boy? No, this is a good computer. It's my good friend for many, many years. No, I don't know what to tell you. It's working just fine on, on my end. Um, okay, I guess. You cannot stop now. You have too many viewers. That's a bad excuse. But on the other hand, I, I do see the point. I do see the point. I'm going to try to find out who's next on the chess TV schedule. And if no one's up, maybe we'll do some, uh, some bullet games. Uh, it's good now, says Tom Andy. It's fine. Temporary lag. My sync is still good. Two sharp comments that it's if, if the computer is my friend for many years, that doesn't sound good. Uh, technology grows old in days, hammer says you die. Yeah, no, but I bought this the the best thing they had. And still if you go out on the market and try to find a, an octcore computer, you actually have some difficulty. So I think an octcore is still pretty good. Uh, Romero says blitz games, no bullet. We want to hear you, your thought processes. Um. Ah, the stockfish is the problem? That's interesting. So if I go out of stockfish, it's going to be better? I didn't realize that the, the browser stockfish was running on my CPU. 
whenever you turn on the stockfish, it lagged. Okay, I didn't realize that was on my CPU. That it's interesting that they're able to do that. To to drop in on your CPU while doing the the analysis. Probably a good thing though. JavaScript runs from your browser, says Tower Jack. Yeah, okay, I didn't realize that actually. I guess someone told me that's how it works on VHS. I didn't realize it had become the norm standard uh bullet 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 says you die um yeah i guess we can do some bullet i'll see if somebody responded Uh, okay, so we're gonna I'm gonna find this guy who's supposed to be next on chess TV It appears that maybe he's doing Spanish Jose Herrera, the winner of yesterday's Arena Kings tournament. He's streaming, but he's streaming in Spanish. Yeah, okay. But at this point, I've delayed the puzzles for so long that <laughs> uh, I don't know if there's anyone left uh, to do the... For the bullet. Thank you to Sad Boy uh, for the hundred bits. Yeah, okay. I'll play a couple of uh, I'll play a couple of voice games. It's fine. I just give me a second. On I'll be back. I'll be back with uh, with some points. Uh, challenges. People really getting ready over with the with the challenges. Yeah, okay. Let's see what we can do. Load. Do you want to save? Yeah, I guess I'll save. Yes, I'll save. Then we'll load the standard stream. And we are gonna change this one. This one, and this one, too. This one. Okay, a couple of Blitz games, and then I gotta go. We're first, we're playing against Hoopstop from the Netherlands. Let's do a Karukan. Um, let's play c5. It's a bit of an, uh, not that normal line of this stuff, which basically means I don't know what I'm doing, which is unfortunate because he seems to know what he's doing. Uh, I'll take this one. I don't really know how the line goes. I think it's knight c6 or it's bishop g4. But G bishop g4 always feels risky because you weaken a lot of white squares. And maybe he can go something like this. 
I'll I'll try bishop g4. It feels more combative. This looks fine if you're used to the French defense, says so Styli. Uh, yeah, it looks fine, but it's actually, I probably it's worse than the French defense. Um, but it's still in development to some degree, this line with c5. It's not being played that often, which normally means that it's not that good. So uh, oftentimes you can just tell from whether or not a line is being played at the top level, whether or not the line is good. And c5 is an uncommon way of playing this. And uh, that basically tells you that probably c5 is not the, <laughs> the best move. Uh, okay, so this is how I'm going to play this. I'm going to sacrifice a pawn on d5. And then I'm going to play e6. So I'm going for quick development. And he doesn't even take this pawn, which I think is a mistake. Uh, I, I think you could have taken that pawn without too much consequences. Uh, because basically the same consequences that would have happened if you take the pawn are going to happen now. The difference just being that I have an extra pawn. Uh, which is uh, never good and now I'm even going to be a pawn up because there's no way of defending the guy on e5. Um, Tush asks, are you going to stream with Kimya tomorrow? Yes, Kimya is coming over and we're going to do a uh, um, hand and brain stream. Uh, and that means that the person, uh, one person is the brain. So one person decides which piece to move. And the other person decides uh, which of the chosen piece you actually do move. Uh, I've actually never played that online or in a streaming setting before. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. The best way to counter a gambit is accepting it, says Tush. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but what is true is that the only way to refute a gambit is normally to accept it. Uh, so there are gambits that are objectively good. Um, yeah, I misplayed this somewhat. Maybe I should have given a check and, and taken this, but I was kind of hoping that he would do that. I was kind of hoping for that fork. I'm not going to lie. Let's do one against Tom Andy. Uh, let's do a queen scambit and let's do a boring queen scambit. So normally you always want to go with your bishop outside of your pawn chain. But seeing as how I'm so good at chess, I'm allowed to violate the principles a couple of times. So instead, I'm going to do the fianchetto. I like to play this fianchetto line, says, with feelings, especially in faster time controls. Yeah, no, I have very harmonious development. My pieces are, are pretty good. I'm going to play knight g3 because he has these two knights both actually wanting the same kind of squares. So my knight is actually not that good on g3. 
but with him being pretty cramped uh, he's going to have some um, it, it's going to be annoying for him not being able to exchange off a couple of pieces and now I'm just going to double I think normally when your opponent goes a5 you should always go a3 uh, but for some reason I decided not to do that here I kind of regret it the reasoning is that after a3 you're supposed to get a4 b4 and that that's gonna be pretty good thank you to you die for the 160 bit uh, i'm actually gonna go a3 because i regret my decision earlier and that you're allowed to do that you're allowed to change your mind Hmm. Yeah, no, black is preparing C5. And I don't really see how to... How to deal with that. Maybe I should sacrifice on F7, actually. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of taking here. Yes, you get a good square on c5, but this pawn is going to be a big contributor in the attack I intend to execute. You know what? I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here because I'm a sneaky guy. I'm going to change the order in which the bishop and queen points down toward the the, the king side okay i'm gonna play f4 i don't think it matters too much so black is going to be able to play g6 uh, and defend like that knight f8 i don't like because now i get the option to play c5 which is usually pretty good Yeah, I'm going to do it. C5 and then... Rook F1, I think. Uh, the thing that makes C5 so effective is that now the bishop cannot really achieve much. Because I'm blocking the pawn on C6. So this pawn is not going anywhere. Uh, I just blundered my rooks. Uh, so much for this being instructional. I blundered my rooks and also I'm getting low on time. So never mind trying to play good chess. Now I'm going to flag. I'm going to flag the guy. I'm, I'm cruel like that. But that's sometimes that's what you gotta do. You play, you try to play good moves, and you play bad moves, and then you just gotta flag your opponent. And there, I blundered a bishop as well. <laughs> that is so bad, so bad. I've been doing tactics all day, and then when it gets down to it, I just blunder all my pieces. This is horrible. He actually blundered his rook and I missed it.
No! Are you kidding me? 0.1 seconds, I have a queen up. Wow, that was poor. I was so sure I was gonna flag him. Too weak, too slow. I think that's... I was so sure I had that under control. He was quick. He was quick at the end there. And I had my chance during the tactics. I had eight good tactics in a row. I had eight good tactics in a row. I could have stopped there. I could have ended the day on a high. But no, you guys had to make me play blitz. And this is how it goes. That is so bad. Yeah, no, I know this position is a draw, but the thing is that it's so difficult for the king to find places to go where the queen isn't attacking. So normally you're able to flag your opponent with the, with the queen against pawn anyhow. Too weak, too slow. Wow, that was that was poor. Okay, I guess we're gonna play one game against Anthony and then then it's gonna be it. But now anyone wanting commentary or instructions, I'm sorry. That's just not happening now. Um Anthony is my uh Anthony is my rebound blitz guy. You're you're my rebound guy. You're the guy I'm gonna rebound from losing horrendously. Uh, so while I play this game, I think I'm I'm gonna quit pretty soon after the game finishes. I want to um, plug my upcoming streams a little bit. Tomorrow at 4 p.m. European time, 4 p.m. European, that's 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, then there's going to be a uh, hand and brain stream with uh, Kimya Sayadi. Uh, she has the Cheeky Chess uh, channel with uh, Diana Mirsa. Uh, I'm going to link to that for those interested. I don't remember if it's Cheeky Chess or Cheeky Chess TV. But there it is. Uh, on Saturday, I'm playing Fortnite. So those of you not at all interested in Fortnite, stay away on Friday. No, on Saturday as I play against uh, Alexandra Botes, or not against, that is the wrong uh, description. Uh, I'm actually playing with, we're gonna team up. Uh, we're not very good players. I think that's fair to say, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna try to help each other with a, uh, uh, showing everyone that bad players can come together and have fun with Fortnite as well. Okay, I'm loving my position. I think I'm basically winning. This is a good move. It just took me some time, but finally those tactics paid off. And this is a good move, I think. I don't care that he's gonna exchange off the knights because I got control over the g8 square. Uh, so I'm gonna take down the, um, the, the g file in due time. Though. 
my plan of taking the the G file has uh, backfired somewhat. And by somewhat, I mean massively backfired. That is so poor. So, so poor. I had such a good position and suddenly I'm the one in trouble. I have no way of defending this. Please don't take this one. Thank you. Actually, that move was also pretty good. Yeah, you want to make a draw? No, you're going for it. You saw I'm having a bad day and you thought, how can I make this day worse? And that's, that's going to do it. Yeah, I'll take this one. I'll gamble with you. Why not? I'll see if you can queen your pawn. Probably you can. But we'll see. Let's try this one. Uh, this one. This one. so bad uh, yeah okay good game that was a horrible way to end the stream I massively regret doing this uh, good games Anthony good games um, Tom Andy um, not my uh, my best moment I'll be back tomorrow if you want to beat us once again. Uh, tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Uh, European. Uh, bye, everyone.